Local landowners give land for new forests. Equal wealth distribution vital for PNG. And police around the country sound warning to troublemakers. This is the National MTV News with Mary Bartulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Wednesday's news. The Puktas Incorporated Land Group in East New Britain Province is the first in the country to have allocated a portion of their customary land to the PNG Forest Authority to plant trees. 10,000 hectares of their land will be used to implement the community-oriented reforestation program called the Operation Pinem Ground, Naplanim Diwai. The program is part of the government's Vision 2050, implemented by the PNG Forest Authority, aimed at planting 80,000 hectares of forest by the year 2050. Buktas is an isolated region in the hinterlands of Lasso binding local level government in East New Britain province. The area is so remote with its people, undergoing a transition from a traditional to modern life. Bad road infrastructures, poor health and education services remained a harsh reality for the people here. But despite these challenges happening around them, the Puktas people are aware about the impacts of logging, oil palm and even climate change, the factors they considered as a threat to their daily lives and their future generations. The Puktas people make up a smaller portion of the Binding people, the traditional inhabitants of East New Britain province who were forced to migrate inland in the past due to traditional warfare over land ownership. In 2012, when the government announced the concept of indigenous landowner groups, elders of various tribes within Puktas blended together and formed their group and called it Puktas Incorporated Land Group. The chairman of the ILG, Peter Kanama, tells me they worry about the future of their children, they worry about land conservation, and they worry about their children becoming landless. Livelihood now. Uh, just uh, life where all people have been living, and by that, Narpla Kai look look long and where me play look him, now me play experience him long Narpla. When the group was formed, their leaders have made rules that certain developments won't happen on their customary land, as they considered them as destructive and has no long-term benefits to their lives. Before logging, you've been stopped long here. You've been heavily harvesting this lahat. Right? We've been looking more him. Uh, even got all malpractices and all mismanagement within uh, for a logging sector. Now we come, now we, we stop him all this or something. So in 2016, when the PNG Forest Authority announced their plans to plant trees to regain forest covers in the country, the Puktas people put their hands up to have the project tested on their customary land. It's a plan called Pinem Ground Naplanim Diwai, a policy initiated by the PNG Forest Authority to regain forests that have been lost through logging, migration of people and other developments. The government under the uh, 2050 vision has given us, PNG Forest Authority, a target of 800,000 hectares of forest plantations that must be established by 2050. And that is the target. The Puktas people has dedicated at least 10,000 hectares of their customary land to this reforestation program. This is a portion of the 10,000 hectares that has just been planted with young trees, with a vast area yet to be planted. The PNG Forest Authority hopes to negotiate with other landowner groups in other parts of the country and plant at least 1,000 hectares of trees on their customary land every year, so that by year 2050, the primary goal of planting 800,000 hectares of forest will be achieved. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. Save the Children in PNG will work closely with three districts in Morabe province to make communities safer for children. PNG project manager Catherine Bedford says many behaviours and practices within communities that constitute child abuse are often regarded as normal but are not reported for justice and limited data is a challenge to give full account of child abuse cases in the country. Save the Children is an international organization that helps to protect rights of children to live free from violence and abuse. In Morobe, 15 communities have been identified in the three districts, Lei, Bulolo and Makam, 
to make positive changes in communities for children. PNG project manager Catherine Bedford says working closely with these districts will help the reduction of abuse to children and witnesses. A worrying concern is that PNG has very limited data on child abuse because most cases remain unreported. Um, a lot of the behaviours and practices within communities um, that constitutes abuse is often, uh, is often regarded as normal or uh, as cultural or social norm or a parenting, uh, parenting right. Um, so it's very difficult to get accurate numbers. Yesterday's workshop informed key stakeholders and partners about the pilot project in 15 communities. This is important to identify the structures and systems that exist in communities around them. Um, we want to be able to work in communities where there's a drive for change, where there's a, an enthusiasm, a motivation, a passion for doing something differently. And we know in Lay, in Malcolm and in Bololo that we, um, we, we, we have, uh, we've built good relationships with, with, the, with the key community members there. Um, they're really keen and engaged to, uh, to make really positive changes in their communities for children. Markham District is one of the identified spot and the District Chief Executive Officer John Orebut says there are a high number of issues of child abuse. The district administration has been working with different organizations to help drive changes for better communities. The program will be there for, for four years and after that they will be also uh, for the sustenance of the project in the long run. Uh, this district would like to take ownership, you know, depends on the the outcomes and the result of the, the project after, after four years. And we would like to take ownership and duplicate into uh, the other villages uh, within the district. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. Employees of the National Weather Service have called off what could have been a nationwide strike pending outcomes of a meeting with the Transport Secretary. Representing the employees was Lawrence Almora, who said a verbal agreement was made this morning to address their salary grievances. Following discussions with the Public Servants Recognition Attribution Tribunal, the National Weather Service now plans to put the nationwide strike on halt for two weeks. The staffs have agreed this afternoon that um, the strike will be put on hold. Um, awaiting the, um, <clears throat> the decision made by the Secretary of Transport Department. They were verbally promised this morning their salary grievances of over eight years will be catered for on the first pay period of 2018. Secretary of Transport Department has, um, has given us his assurance this morning at the uh, tribunal that um, uh, whatever the salary discrepancies and uh, uh, whatever is due for us that we have been asking for, um, the Secretary of Transport Department has given us assurance that, uh, that uh, he will look into that and uh, it will be uh, paid to us by pay number one of 2018. On Sunday, the National Weather Service issued a statement to stop all services by the close of business today. These services include weather forecasting for both the aviation industry and the public. The Transport Department has assured NWS employees that it will address this concern come the 3rd of January 2018. But NWS staff say if their demands are not met, they will proceed with the strike. Uh, if it does come by pay number one, then the strike will be completely put off. But if it does not come as per the, <clears throat> the approval made by Transport Department Secretary by pay number one, then uh, another action will be taken by the staff of PNG Nestor Water Service. Dr. Gunga, National MTV News. The People's National Congress has welcomed Kerawagi MP Barry Palma to the party. Party leader and Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says the move proves the stability and confidence of a working government. Palmer was a member of the PNG National Party and claims his move to PNC has been supported by his people.
The People's National Congress Party is confident of Palmer's move following the announcement this morning. Senior officers of the Kerawagi district also witnessed the occasion. PNC party leader and Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says it's not about the number game but effective policies and implementation to the PNG communities. Knowing how the party uh, operates, how the party's stability is, how the party's uh, policies are uh, very firm and strong, our focus on health and education, on uh, districts and the provinces, and of course on infrastructure and law and order is uh, a strength of the party uh, that continues to believe in these key policies. Kerawagi MP Barry Palmer contested the 2017 national elections under the PNG National Party. However, following the formation of government, he joined the Alatok camp. Following his move, he says he is prepared to work with the ruling government to serve the interest of Kerawagi people. It's a very key thing that we have to deliver to the people and we need that stability. Uh, I've consulted with my voters, my supporters in my electorate uh, that uh, I will do that move and I have to move to the ruling party uh, under the good leadership of uh, our Prime Minister. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill welcomed Palmer and announced stronger political ties with the people of Kerawagi and for the PNG coalition partners to work together for the people's benefit. It goes to show that uh, uh, the current member is the right choice by the people of Kerawagi and uh, we look forward to working with him and our party executives and I welcome him to the party today. Uh, we have informed all our other leaders about his uh, move to the party. MP Palmer recently won his election petition case against run-up Francis Kikin. Jacob Lopave Jr. National MTV News. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill has urged Papua New Guineans to embrace the new year 2018. As 2017 winds down, there were achievements and also challenges. The Prime Minister has urged the people to celebrate the festive period in the true spirit of Christmas. And uh, let's work together for our country and our, our, our people. And uh, we want you to enjoy a safe uh, and uh, accident-free, incident-free, uh, violence-free uh, New Year and the Christmas, so please uh, uh, celebrate in, uh, uh, in, in, in peace and quiet. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more stories after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Grade 12 school leavers can now access the internet and find out about the status of their placements in higher education institutions for the 2018 academic year. The Higher Education Department has released the official rollout of the online selection system. Departmental Head Father Jan Shuba says it's a momentous event for Papua New Guinea. This is Papua New Guinea's first online selection list for grade 12 school leavers, which is now available on Higher Education Department's website. It was officially released last night for grade 12 school leavers who have been selected through the online selection system to register tertiary institutions for the 2018 academic year. 12,234 students have been allocated to a study program. 47% of the 25,848 who applied. All students with a GPA of 2.3 and above that met respective GPA and subject-related entry requirements were allocated space within a higher education institution. What's happening is that uh, we've invited all the selectors to come in. Uh, basically, the online selection system is such that selectors can now remotely log in to the system and remotely apply their criteria and electronically they get a list, selection list, uh, and so but. First and second preferences indicated were used to allocate a place at a higher education institution while GPA and subject related entry requirements were used for ranking of the selection list. All others that selected the option to be considered for alternate offers were allocated space to which they exclusively met entry requirements. New intakes from this list will receive admission offer letters or notice. This year, because we're introducing it for the first time, 
Uh, we've allowed a consultation process so that we have our support service, our technical staff on the side of the software system to, if there's any queries on how to use the system, we're there to help them. Yeah. In the meantime, the public have been advised one institution initially provided incorrect student quota after it overestimated its own capacity and will enroll fewer students. DHEST will inform all TESS awardees through separate offer letters. Any selected student without the TESS offer letter should consider being a self-sponsored student. And any offers given outside of the online selection system will not be considered for a national scholarship. It's fully encrypted so that the uh, don domain name or the server itself is not hacked into. So we, we are addressing those issues. Research, science and technology has been looking for ways to improve how it can facilitate the national selections. Our objective is to promote transparency and accountability and more in, most importantly, increase the probability to capable and eligible school leavers. See the ID, you see the grades, you don't see the province and the name. So once the institution will accept those students, then their name will come up at the province. Stacy Yalo, National MTV News. On a related note, the Institute of Business Studies group is disappointed at not being part of the recent higher education selection process for the 2018 academic year. IBSU has confirmed that about 500 students did apply to study at the institution, but unfortunately, IBSU and IBS were left out on the selection day. IBS University Vice Chancellor Edward Silva has described the situation as sad for education development in the country. Mr. Silva says part of their noble duty as an institution is to educate Papua New Guineans. And so it's disappointing that IBSU had not been involved in the selection process. It is a very sad situation. Being a university recognized beginning of this year and we were not included. And we were not included in the sense we have not been even invited. So that's a sad situation. IBS has confirmed releasing 500 students' acceptance offers. However, the figures are expected to increase due to the demand and inquiry and most already been issued with application forms for admissions. And also the, the acting secretary went on air and said that we are not a higher education institute and then we are not invited. So, so that's where the status is. But we will be recruiting students, and students come on their way, even though the uh, students, those who have selected IBS University, and uh, even any other students yeah. who wanted to study at IBS, we will make sure that they will get the international qualification, international standards, and we will continue to serve our nation as we uh, promised to uh, the country. In an earlier statement, Higher Education Secretary Father Yang Shuba said that IBS is not a registered institution. Although IBS Group reiterated to have met the required standard, DHS stand still remains they aren't registered as per their list of registered higher institutions listed on their website as of December 7th of this year. Stacy Yalo, National MTV News. Police in Eastern Highlands Province will target troublemakers in communities during the festive period. Acting Provincial Police Commander Chief Inspector Ben Neneo told MTV News special operations will ensure a trouble-free celebration. Random roadblocks will also be conducted on the main highway. Police in Eastern Highlands are ready for the special Christmas and New Year operations. At least 200 personnel will be stationed in all districts of the province including the township of Kainantu. So our policy is ready to conduct the special operations. The annual special operation is for a trouble-free festivity so people can peacefully celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. Chief Inspector Ben Neneo has also warned troublemakers and instigators to keep out of trouble. Enjoy the Christmas and the festive season and not to cause trouble because we will still be uh, enforcing our operation orders, uh, especially those uh, 
militarily at offense, we will be very strict. And, uh, like uh, here at the police station, we will uh, we'll make it tough for people who want to cause disturbances. Despite limited resources of 30 vehicles, the acting PPC has assured the general public in Eastern Highlands province that law and order will be maintained. The special Christmas and New Year operation started on Monday and will continue through to the new year. Martha Lewis, National MTV News, Goroka. Lay MP John Rosso is supporting a call for an investigation into the National Housing Corporation and its dealings following several evictions in Lay. The call was made by Buffy Guo Don, one of those evicted from her home last Friday by NHC. Buffy Gordon is a senior physiotherapist at the Engal Hospital. She was granted a stay order from the district court yesterday after being evicted last week Friday. She is now calling on the government to take action on the NHC, saying she is the legal tenant and was accused of having areas that she did not have. Investigation is to some it must go inside long. Look him down. The legal the tenancy agreement that they give us, sir. So we are legal tenants when we are binded by the, um, the tenancy agreement and we don't have any uh, rental errors. Lay MP John Rosso is supporting this call, saying these illegal land deals and evictions have gone on for too long. I think there should be an investigation into it and I think uh, my good minister for housing is also supportive of the idea and I think he's uh, willing to look into it. Last week, Mr. Rosso visited families in the Four Mile area who have been affected by evictions for more than five years. The ones at Three Mile and Four Mile were evicted using uh, village court orders, which is illegally wrong. So that's easy to fix. He has resolved to assist those whose cases are genuine. I, through my office, have engaged a lawyer to give the best possible advice to the tenant. Yesterday, Housing Minister John Cowper, when prompted by the media, said the evictions in Leh were done by certain parties, but he stopped short of blaming NHC offices Lay. in Leh. But they got a court order from Leh to evict these people there. But uh, the tenant also got a restraining order, but it was late. So the matter is before the court. So they are going to sort it out uh, by today or tomorrow. So far, there have been three confirmed evictions by the NHC in Leh in four weeks. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Leh. More can be done to improve the level of transparency within the extractive industries in Papua New Guinea. This from the Papua New Guinea EITI National Secretariat. The PNG EITI today hosted a workshop outlining the progress in releasing the country's EITI report for the year 2016. The report is expected to be released in the coming days. The National Secretariat of the Papua New Guinea Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative has been working to finalize the country's reports for the years 2015 and 2016. These reports aimed at providing an overview of the payments from the extractive industries to government in an effort to improve accountability and transparency. At present, the reports reflect the contributions by industry at the national government level However, there are hopes that this can extend to sub-national levels in the future. Uh, from our assessment of um, um, sub-national reporting um, and the capacity of those um, entities to actually produce um, good reports, audited reports, um, good articles, and those things are still um, unsure right now. With Papua New Guinea still a candidate to the international EITI, the National Secretariat has been working with the industry as well as government to improve the reporting mechanism since its first report for the year 2013. And whilst there are still areas that need improvement, the Secretariat has acknowledged the support from government over the past five years. Political support and the government support has been very, uh, um, very crucial for us. And I think the EITI has, uh, has achieved so much because of that commitment by the government. And the government uh, commitment was really good in the last couple of years, especially with uh, um, support and also resourcing. The PNG EITI report for 2015 and 2016 are now being finalized and will be released in the coming days. The findings and recommendations will be crucial 
especially with the country due to be assessed in its candidacy for the international EITI in 2018. And now a look at the finance news. The Kino closed 10 points lower at 0.3095 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kino was buying 0.303 US dollars, 0.3904 Australian dollars, 0.251 Euro, and 33.71 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York Close, gold is trading higher. Coffee, cocoa, and copper closed the day lower. Crude oil is trading higher, copper closed higher, while palm oil closed the day unchanged. And on the stock markets, the Dow Jones closed 37 points lower, the ASX is up 3 points and the All Ordinary is up 4 points. Here with National MTV News, we'll have more on the other side of these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. The outgoing United Nations Resident Coordinator, Roy Trividi, says Papua New Guinea's leadership must unite and work for the common good. The equal distribution of wealth is core in service delivery, so people in the inland rural areas can also access the same government services as urban centres. With Papua New Guinea adopting and implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, Trividi says there is hope for better Papua New Guinea in the years ahead. This was Mr. Trividi's final interview with the media, and Fabian Hakalitz brings us this special report. But perhaps the most important thing is our engagement with communities, and that I feel extremely proud and privileged uh, to have done. And it's not just myself, it's the whole UN system and all of my colleagues who have contributed, but I've thoroughly enjoyed my time. But also on things like with Capital Development Fund, Roy Trivedi, the United Nations Resident Coordinator in Papua New Guinea, has been acknowledged for his distinguished services in the country and his four-year contract. Trivedi has been instrumental in strengthening the United Nations system in the country, especially with the 14 agencies. And all of that has been done by the United Nations, not just by UN agencies. It's been done in partnership. And my first, one of the things that I wanted to achieve was to make the United Nations the partner of choice for government, for others. So whenever governments or civil society or whoever was trying to do something difficult and sensitive, they would come, they would think, who would we work with? But immediately they would start to think, well, actually, the UN system isn't bad to work with. The promotion and implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals is one of the major achievements for Papua New Guinea. Not only that, but the country's homegrown sportsmen and women promoted as ambassadors. We also launched something which I feel very, very excited about, which is the work with, our business, with the Business Council of Papua New Guinea. And for the first time ever in the world, we have businesses really taking part and showing how they are engaging with the Sustainable Development Goals and so on. Um, and then there are some softer things that we did as well, which I feel very proud about. And those include things like working with the uh, SDG ambassadors, the youth. We can show clearly um, how our company performance is achieving the SDGs um, in line with what the government's expectations are. Because the government will be achieving uh, certain goals. Uh, and we, as a company, will achieve certain goals and, um, and, you know, and obviously continue to do that. But it's about finally recognizing it. And you know, as, as a company, I don't think uh, we, we know about it. Um, but to be able to sort of compare notes with the government for the first time, I think that's quite important. Policymakers need to have. But I am personally in favor of special measures to support more women because that is the only way that we can get more women representing all of our society in Parliament. Papua New Guinea's autonomous region of Bougainville is a testimonial to the temporary special measures which promotes women into politics. Women can provide an avenue where women can come and, uh, come and uh, express outrage 
in terms of uh, the things that I want, want to happen. To bring change in the parliament, I feel that we have to talk about them. And when we talk, we talk about a facial woman. I really believe in working together, working in partnership with men. And that's where I got the support to enter into politics. Spirit of I think we, it has set something up for also our national parliament to strive to achieve. I'm confident that Papua New Guinea will start to make some of those changes, but it does take everybody. It means all of us needing to work together to say, you know, parliaments are good, particularly when they represent all of the people. The United Nations has been working closely with the national government on legislations. Trivedi says good legislations is important, but the challenge remains with its implementation. I think the 10th Parliament has a very, very important role to play in setting all these things up and making sure that the sustainable development goals, the aspirations of our people really start to be realized. And then the 11th Parliament will need to continue that. If by the year 2025, we start to show that we are really pushing forward on these things, then I think Papua New Guinea will be ready to start to achieve it also its 2050 vision. If, however, we slip back or we just continue to work at the pace we are, then I'm afraid that we will be left further behind compared to other countries. And so we have to work together to make sure, as Papua New Guinea, Guineans and people who care about Papua New Guinea, that we all do the best. And there's lots of good things to build on, but there's also things that we all need know that we need to improve. It gives us that opportunity to be able to access opportunities in funding, technical assistance, and towards meeting the uh, sustainable development goals that we've agreed to. I think there are 17 of that we have signed in. The United Nations has been working closely with the public and private sector to improve lives. A good reflection is the conservation area in West Sipik. Uh, Jim Thomas and the team there, they have worked with 50 plus villages up in Lumi and every single house in those 50 villages has its have their own pit latrine, a proper ventilated pit latrine. Every single house has been taught good sanitation practices to wash hands and so on. And what has happened as a result of it is that the health indicators in that one area have started to improve massively. The attendance of children in school has, has improved because children are not getting diarrheal diseases and so on. It's, happened, it's helped nutrition levels to improve and so on. So these are small things which can lead to better outcomes. And governments, of course, have a role to play. But if you wait for government to provide all these services, then you know, people will be waiting for a long time. Because the fact is that in our country, only 10% or less of people actually pay taxes into the formal system. And the taxes are the way in which government can then provide services because you use the revenue from tax to provide health, education and so on. His last public appearance was the Joint Supervisory Body meeting between the government of Papua New Guinea and the autonomous Bougainville government, where the United Nations plays a critical role in the peace process of Bougainville. As I said, I think the key now is delivery. And delivery must involve not just the ABG, it must also involve national government. And it's great to see also some of the Bougainvillian members of the national parliament, including, of course, our minister for Bougainville affairs, uh, Father Simon, who plays a very important role in all of overseeing it. It's a really important, I think, next couple of years in, in Bougainville. And then beyond that, as I said, in the next seven years, we will know the full outcome of whether the peace agreement has actually been implemented, whether other things have also happened. Trivedi departed yesterday and hopes to visit Papua New Guinea soon for the love of the people 
and the country to see the colors of this country and so on i'm also you know really pleased to have met so many amazing people okay across the country doing incredible things look i am hopeful that if papua new guinea starts to achieve rather than 30% of its potential starts to increase it to 50 60 70% then i think the country will take off but it is going to be challenging it needs everybody pulling together don't just leave it to governments governments have very important role to play of course and our political leaders we need to manage the economy really well we need to make sure our people have got we invest in our people improve the quality of services and so on and if we do those things then i'm very hopeful that papua new guinea will achieve its 2050 vision fabian hakelitz national mtv news you're with national mtv news we go for a break now when we come back some sporting updates in trukai sports stay tuned Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. Team PNG Shift the mission MOYY says PNG performed exceptionally well in the mini Pacific Games in Vanuatu. YY, along with the remaining contingent of Team PNG, arrived in the country today. And Toya Whistle's second finish in the women's 200-meter race came as a surprise for Team PNG. The 200 and 100-meter race was Whistle's field of dominance over the years, but a clean record was broken by Cook Islander Taya Patricia in the 200-meter final. However, Emma Waiwai says Whistle's loss brings hope and will motivate the track queen to reclaim her dominance in the next Pacific Games in 2019. And we'll be back with more of True Guy Sports after these messages. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. To Rugby League, a test match between the Fiji Bati and the New Zealand Kiwis is set to take place in June next year. Fiji defeated the Kiwis 4-2 during the World Cup and it will see them play an interesting matchup in Sydney. If Fiji beats New Zealand again next year, then it will push them down the rankings while Fiji moves up. Similarly, for the 25th anniversary, they have requested to the NRL if they could play Tonga at the ANZ Stadium in Suva in October. The clash between the two Pacific Island teams could be deemed as the third, fourth place playoffs for the 2017 Rugby League World Cup. Moving on, Rugby League superstar Jared Hain has been accused of raping a young woman in America. The assault allegedly took place while he was playing for the San Francisco 49ers in the National Football League. A young woman in the United States has filed a civil lawsuit against Parramatta Eel star Jared Hayne. In court documents, the woman is referred to as Ms V and her identity hasn't been made public yet. The woman claims she was raped by Jared Hayne while he was playing in the NFL for the San Francisco 49ers. She says they met on a night out in San Jose in December 2015. She says she was drunk and they went back to his house where they allegedly had non-consensual sex. She only reported the matter to police in May last year. But the district attorney's office rejected the case because there wasn't enough evidence to prove rape beyond reasonable doubt. The NRL Integrity Unit won't be taking any action at this stage, but will be monitoring the civil case in the United States. Jared Hayne has just signed with the Parramatta Eels, where his NRL career began before shifting codes. It's expected Hayne will be served with court papers soon and will have 90 days to respond. And that's it for Trukai Sports. We go for a break when we come back and the weather details for the next 24 hours. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux.
A look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region, a shower or two expected in Popandita, mostly fine for Port Mosby, Daru, Kerama and Alotau. To the Mumasi region, mostly fine in Madang, Riwek and Vanimo, showers expected in Leh and Wau. To the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine for Lorangau and Kaviang, a few showers expected in Kokopo and Rabaul as well as in Kimbe, a shower or two as well in Buka. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Groka, Kundia, Mendi and Wabeg, you can expect some afternoon showers. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And that's the new sport and weather for today, Wednesday, the 20th of December 2017. On behalf of the MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night.